this should be a school uniform. If I will have my school, this is what the uniform will look like. <laughs> Hi everyone, so here I am just cutting out from muslin a front bodice foundation block. It has two darts, one on the side seam and one on the waist. I cut it in fold and here I am just marking the darts. And then using pencil and ruler, I am going to draw the lines. I am using a muslin fabric first to be my sample and then I'm going to do the same things on my main fabric. And then placing on fold, I cut the back this foundation block and cut it in half so I have two identical pieces and then I'm just pinning down the darts and I sew it and gave it a press and it looks like this and then facing them right sides together I sewed the side seams and the shoulder seams closed So this is what the draft looks like. I think it's good. Like it hits my waist. The armhole is alright. So I'm happy with this lotus pattern. It behind my bust area so you can see that curve. Because there are two darts so because I want to adjust the neckline I'm just going to get a pencil or a marker but with muslin you can use pencil and you don't really have to go hard on what thread you're gonna use or what color you're gonna use because it's just a sample I used red thread so so I used that marking as a guide on how low I want it to be and I just connected it using a curved ruler. Then I cut it out. So going back to trying it out, it's always important to try out your sample no matter how small the changes you make, just, just to be sure doesn't seem like much changes but actually this feels better it doesn't really restrict my throat that much and it used to be here and now it's here it will have a one centimeter or three uh, three over eight inch seam allowance I just took the piece that I cut out and use that as my guide to alter my front foundation block pattern. What they usually do is they completely deconstruct the bodice to get the exact shape but I just find this is easier and faster because it's just a small adjustment. Then I'm also marking out the seam allowances. So now moving on, I do the same thing to the main fabric after cutting out the bodice patterns this is the only fabric I was left with so I had to improvise because I couldn't make a dress out of it I just didn't have enough material so I decided to make a peplum top but still I wanted to maintain the scallop color and the tie in the front which is the main design Fold the fabric in half and then fold it again to make a triangle shape. Then using a ruler, I marked out the longest possible radius for my circle. And then I cut it out. So the next thing that I'm doing is cutting out the radius 
that will fit my waist. So I use the formula r is equals to circumference over 2 times pi. But if you don't want to go through all that math stuff, then just go online and look for a radius calculator. For the peplum, put your waist measurement down for the circumference. So I pinned the bodice and the peplum right sides together and sewed it down. I also gave it a press on the seam so that it lays flat. I took the white shirt and I took out the tie that it has underneath and I started cutting out the lace detail that I want to incorporate on my top. I also gave it a press just because it's wrinkly. This half circle is from the peplum earlier and I've cut out two for now just to test out what I want to do with the sleeves. At this point, I didn't have a clear vision on what I want the top to look like because I originally was designing for a dress but then I ended up with this. I really love it and it gives me a feminine vibe but also a hint of corporate attire. Butterfly sleeves generally have this pattern but because I am running short on fabric, I can only do half circles and I need two. But because I wasn't sure on how short I want the other end to be, I decided to do a full circle for now and I pinned them right sides together and sewed it down. Here I just wanted the seams to be aligned and it's just a perfectionist MMA. This is what it looks like when it was on my mannequin. I just took my scissors out and I trimmed down to the length that I want. I only did one sleeve first just to be sure that it is what I want. Once I was satisfied, I cut out the same pattern from what's left of my fabric, which isn't much. I tried measuring the sleeves that was attached to the bodice already so that I can make an identical pattern for the second sleeve. I forgot to mention in the beginning that the white shirt that I used for the color in this top is actually thrifted nobody in the family uses it so i thought of just giving it a new life while the navy blue fabric is from the thrift shop as well and it was somebody else's scrap fabric So the same thing as the first sleeve, I pinned the bodice and the sleeve right sides together making sure that the seams are aligned. So I think they're not, this one is shorter than this one because if you remember in the video, I don't have a lot of fabric left and I was really just working with what I have left and I wasn't able to cut the whole pattern out and it's this one so to fix that I'll just cut some out from this one so just so that they're balanced and they're equal what I did was I folded the bodice in such a way where the sleeves meet and are on top of each other and then I pinned them on the seam so that they are aligned and they don't move around while I was cutting The next part is the scallop color. I firstly removed the buttons and saved them for future projects. According to my pattern making book, a flat color is made this way. So you will be needing both your back bodice block and your front bodice block and you have to tape them together at the neck hole and overlap 1.5 centimeters on the armhole. 1.5 centimeters is a standard measurement for adults. It's one centimeter for kids. Here I am just trying to sketch out where I want the scallops to be placed and how big I want them to be. When I was satisfied, I took my tracing wheel and I placed a paper underneath the patterns and just traced the scallop color. I also included the seam allowances. 
and then I just followed the marks to make a pattern and then I also added one centimeter or three over eight inch seam allowance because this is a flat color a trick that you can do so that you don't have to cut it out from the main fabric yet is to pin it on the dress form this way you can finalize your color pattern the lace detail from the shirt is not big enough for me to be able to cut the whole pattern so i had to cut it in two sections but i also added seam allowances for when i joined them together this way the scallops will still look continuous I also press the seam allowances open so it doesn't bulk up later on. I also cut out the same pattern from the white shirt. I then iron the plain white scallop collar to the interfacing. And then I just cut out the excess afterwards. Then I faced them right sides together and sewed along the edges except the top bit. And then just snip bits at the scallop edges so that when you turn it inside out, it will be rounded as possible. When attaching the collar to the bodice, the first thing that I did was to figure out where the center of the neck hole is. I did that by folding it in half, aligning the seams, and then putting a pin to mark out the center. And I just placed the scallop collar on top of the bodice. The easiest way for me to make sure that the scallop collar doesn't move around is to first sew from the center. Overlock the edges or sew a zigzag stitch. And then I understitch from the outside but it wouldn't really show because the collar will be covering it. This is done so that the seam allowances won't show when I'm wearing the top. My fabric has some stretch to it so I do not need to install a zipper. But I do need to put a 10cm opening from the top so that I can push my head through. Then I sewed them right sides together. Make sure that the waist seams are aligned. I then folded the excess seams on the inside and top stitched it down so that it stays in place. I wanted to make the most out of the white shirt. So what I did is create bias tapes from the back panel. To make the bias pattern, I cut out a 4cm wide strip of paper. This will result in a 1cm wide bias. Here I am just pulling the fabric just to make sure that it is stretchy and that I can cut the bias tape from that angle. I cut out as many strips as I can from the back panel of the shirt just to make sure that I have enough bias and then place them this way and sew diagonally. I then cut out the excess fabric so it doesn't bulk up later on. Face them right sides together and sew along the edges. Always start sewing where there are seams so that they line up. Overlap the edge for 1cm and start sewing from there. And then when you've sewed all around and went back to the starting point, make sure to leave a 1cm seam allowance and then face them right sides together and sew. Fold it 1cm and fold it again to hide the raw edges and then sew just underneath the seam. This is to make sure that the folded fabric underneath is being captured in the stitches. I then took the tie that was originally under the shirt to make it into a bow. I just top stitched it down and then I added a hook and eye at the back. And this is what my top looks like.
this kind of designs really flatters the hair body type and what the butterflies leaves does it creates an illusion illusion it creates an illusion that you have wider like if you see. these are my shoulders and with the butterfly sleeves on it just looks wider right so if you have small shoulders or just narrow ones this is a design you can go for. follow me on my instagram account and if you decide to make one of my tutorials tag me thank you so much for watching if you like this video give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this one thank you so much for watching if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Okay.